are some economics forces you would recommend to your students and why? Economic forces. Well, economic courses. Oh, economic courses. Well, the the basic one, of course, is the macro and micro course, but and that's I think that's a good course for anybody to take. The course I used to teach was a uh, fundamentals of economics, which is just understanding the basic concepts, of course, of demand and supply, but even more the idea of of making choices, because e economics is really about the idea of weighing the cost versus the benefit of every decision that we make. Uh, we have a concept which is called opportunity cost. When, when a person goes to the movie, they give up the opportunity to go out with their parents, we'll say. Or when you, you're, you're, you're at the movies, you're giving up an opportunity to do something else. And that's what economics is about. It, it's about weighing one thing against another. And if people understand that principle, it helps them make bigger decisions the rest of their life. And those things are important because uh, everything has a cost. It may not be a dollar and cents cost, but it may be a cost in terms of time or effort or whatever it might be. We have to make those decisions. And, and I think that helps to, to regulate how much money you're going to spend, how much time you want to spend. Um, those are important things. So whether you take a course in economics or understand the underlying principles of it, uh, economics is a decision-making course. That's really what it is. And if people can understand that, they don't have to take a course in it, just as long as they can make good decisions the rest of their lives. That's very important, very important, yeah. What careers can you get with a degree in economics? Oh, I think that they're limitless. You could go into banking, you could go into education, you could go into government work, you could go into international. Um, there's all sorts of things, because there are people that have got economics degrees that do all sorts of things. Uh, being an attorney, going into science, going into business consulting, because uh, economics is a very, very good, solid liberal arts degree. And um, again, w once you're a thinker, you, you can look at all sorts of possibilities. You could be an entrepreneur. Uh, there are all sorts of people that are doing all kinds of different things and they have a, an economics major. I mean, there are people that are president of the United States, there are people that are rock stars. Uh, there's all kinds of different people that have had economics majors and they are uh, very successful in their fields. Yeah, yeah. Are there any new courses in economics you wish you had when you were in college? Well, one of the new courses is a cost-benefit course that's been offered. And um, there's also a new course in, in game theory, which we didn't have when I went to college. And both of those, I think, are be, be very, very good. I think they're very helpful for the students right now. Those are good, two good courses. Um, and we're also, there's, there's a few more courses in international economics, which has become more important now than it's ever been. And I think that's important for students to have. Those would be good ones, yes. Have there been any changes in the economy that have influenced the way you have taught over the years? Oh, I think the big changes in the economy are, are happening all the time. There was a time in economics that you just focused on what was going on in the United States. And now, of course, there's much more emphasis on what's going on in the world because we are an interdependent world. I mean, if you look at our clothes, you look at the labels in the clothes, they come from all over the world. If you open up the hood of your car, you'll find out that the, the parts of the car are coming from all over. Uh, the, the, the food that we eat come from all over in the world. The, the, the products that we buy, whether it be um, even the shampoos, deodorants, uh, all those sorts of things are international. And I think it's important that um, the students totally understand that we are an interdependent world. So what goes on in China, what goes on in Japan, what goes on in, in Europe has a big impact on our economies in terms of jobs, and when things go right or when things go wrong, they have an impact on what's going on in the United States. So we have to have a good understanding. And so that's one of the reasons that we have a global economics course in our curriculum and that we have courses of international trade. It's very, very important that the students get a better realization. And ideally, one of the great things would be if more and more of our students had a chance to study abroad, to take courses studying abroad. 
and even have an opportunity. We've got international students here in the campus. It'd be nice if our U.S. students would get to know more of our international students better to get a better appreciation of what goes on in other countries. Very important. Yeah. What was it like teaching economics between 2006 and 2008 during the housing market crash? <laughs> That's a very, very good question. I, I will tell you, I, uh, every morning I come in and I read the Wall Street Journal. And so I will tell you that in some cases, there were mornings there was, such, there was so much bad news in the Wall Street Journal that when I went into class, I didn't want to spend too much time on the Wall Street Journal because I was afraid the students would feel bad. <laughs> and so I would limit the amount of news about the economy. So we would just talk about the general concepts of economics. So I just tried to give them an outline of what was going on a little bit and then we would talk about the general principles of economics. Because uh, we were experiencing a very, very severe slowdown and every day there was some bad news. Uh, if you can imagine that, the stock market had fallen from 14,000, 14,000, the Dow Jones Industrial Index fell from 14,000 down to 6,547. That was, it fell down all the way, and that was in March of 2009. And so it, the, it was a scary time because when it fell to that point, um, that's when the housing sector was down, the, the, the banking sector was in bad shape, um, there was just, uh, unemployment was, was rising. And nobody knew whether that was the bottom, and nobody knew if that could go further down. And that was a scary time. And so it was a matter of, you don't want to give people more bad news on top of it. I know there were people that were listening, not necessarily students, but there were people just listening to the news all the time. And that could be very depressing, it really was. So it was, um, you had to try to find some bright spots that were happening, like, Things are going to be improving one of these days. But that was an interesting time, but it was a sad time. And, and fortunately, uh, what happened is when the stock market finally bottomed at 65.47, uh, a lot of investors held on to their stocks. And, and, and if you can imagine this, uh, the market was at 65.47 and now it's at 25,000. But the sad thing is some people got so scared they sold out when the market was at 6,547 and they missed it going up to 25,000. But w people are scared. You can't blame them. They, they just said, I want out. So it was, it was a fearful time for some people. Yeah. What is the current state of the economy? What are some of the trends that we should be watching for? Well, the economy in, in many ways is very solid. The big thing to look at is that earnings of companies are strong. The inflation rate is, is good, it's very moderate. So in other words, the purchasing power of the dollar is strong. The unemployment rate is quite low. And there actually are more jobs than there are people. And that's a good sign. Uh, there's some, been some reduction in uh, regulation, which means it's a little bit easier for some companies to maneuver. So there's some positive things that are, that are going on. Now, trends in the economy, uh, there's efficiencies in the economy that, that are really helping the economy move forward. But where the economies become more efficient through the technology and innovations, those are all good things that are happening. What's complicating the economy a little bit right now is the tariff situation. The tariff war that's taking place with the United States and China and, and some other companies or other countries. Uh, and that's causing some uncertainties. Uh, one of these days, that's going to straighten out. But because of tariffs, uh, there's some uncertainties where companies don't know how much the cost of materials, how, how much it's going to cost for some of their materials when they're producing products. And so there's, it's causing some difficulties with some of our U.S. industries. They're not knowing how much material they're going to be able to sell overseas. Uh, there's some confusion of that. And maybe that's going to be a short-term problem. But overall, the economy is quite strong. It has, it, it's really been very strong. The banking sector is strong. The housing sector is strong. Interest rates are low. 
uh, those were all the good things that were not happening back in the recession that we had. And we are right now in the longest running bull market that we've ever had in the stock market. And the bull, of course, means that the stock market's going up, and this is the longest bull market that we've ever had in the history of the United States.